Thank you so much for this privilege to be honored alongside such an incredible group of women. When I learned that one of JWI's missions was to promote financial literacy for women, I was so excited because this mission is near and dear to my heart. When I was in my early 20s, my life was playing out kind of like a Hollywood movie. I had a blossoming career at Merrill Lynch. I met and married a man that I was in love with, and he was tall and Jewish. And believe me, that is not an easy combination to find. <laughs> and with the miracle of modern science, we were able to have twins. We were in love, and we were a great team. It was a cold and rainy day back in March of 2005, and I was sitting at my desk at work, and the telephone rang. It was my regular afternoon call from Scott, and I picked up the phone, and I expected our normal banter, but instead, Scott kept repeating, Michelle, I love you. I love you, Michelle. I love you. I said, I, I love you too, honey. I'm going to see you at home. And I hung up the phone, and I headed to the parking garage. And it was on the elevator ride down to the parking garage that I realized the conversation that I had just had with Scott was not normal. My heart started racing. When I got home, Scott was not there. And for hours, I waited and waited. And eventually, I called the police. And after weeks that seemed like months, I got a phone call from the police notifying me that kayakers on the Potomac River had found my husband's body and that he had committed suicide. The man that I loved, my partner in life, the father to our children was gone. And I had no idea how my two-year-old twins and I were going to survive the rest of our lives without him. You would have thought that with my education and my financial career that I would have been prepared for the unthinkable. But for generations, women have been taught that financial matters are a man's role and that caregiving is a woman's role. And Scott and I fell into those same gender roles despite my extensive financial background. According to the CDC, women are living longer than ever before, on average five years longer than men. And what the statistics show is that 80% of us will be solely responsible for our financial well-being at some point in our lives. 80%, that's a lot of us, that's most of us in this room. But the scary thing is that 50% of us are not prepared for that reality. So if you knew that tomorrow you would all of a sudden be in charge of your financial life, your children, and your future, what would you do differently today? My pearl is quite simple. In order to live a secure and empowered life, we as women need to prioritize our financial health, educate ourselves with information, and take action to put ourselves in a strong financial position. That movie that I had dreamed about for my life, it now has a beautiful sequel. I met and married the second man of my dreams, and together we are raising five wonderful children. As women, to live 
a life on our terms. We must prioritize our financial health, educate ourselves, and take action. Because the most common way that a woman gives up her power is by thinking she doesn't have any. And what I want each and every single one of you here today to know is that you hold the power within you to live your most financially fulfilling and fabulous life. Thank you. <laughs>